<laughs> okay. I pretty much how TAT goes. Kind of give a little background summary. I have only three pauses, so it kind of does suck since I'm not a referee. So uh, let's let's um, let's uh, explain what TVT is about. Yes, TVT is my worst matchup, and there are reasons why. But I understand TVT. There's a difference between you understanding and dying to it, or you don't know it and still die to it. <laughs> if you mess up TVT, there's ways to come back, unlike the other matchups. Okay, so TVT. Okay, so I'm going to make this analogy that I've said so many times on my stream. But TVT is like an angry relationship between a male and a female. Okay, the male slaps the girl around. The female just takes it in. Okay? So in TVT sense, it's like saying the guy is being the aggressor and the guy is being a defender. So in TVT, you you play two one of two roles. You can either be the attacker, you can be the defender. Both people can def be the defender, both people can be the attacker, or one person can be the attacker and the other one can be a defender. The guy who is being the attacker is generally the guy who has gas or earlier gas. So just remember that, guys. The guy who has the earlier gas is usually the guy controlling the tempo of the game. He is going to be the one who's being the attacker. So, examples of a defensive player are generally guys who like one max expo, reaper expo, some kind of ex uh, macro build. Okay, and meanwhile, the attacker is usually the guy that's going one one one. And there's like a million variations on one one one. Kind of, kind of. Okay. But uh, that's where I'm going to explain how TBT attacking role goes because in the attacker role, okay, the attacking guy usually has five main standard unit compositions. Okay, so I'm going to go to my desktop. Yeah, desktop. Now I'm going to open up a notepad. Where the hell's my notepad? Trusty notepad. Okay, I think this is... you guys can see. Okay, there we go. So TVT. Okay. So in TVT, usually one guy is there's the attacker and defender. Okay. So up depending on how. Okay, so there are both pro, um, cons and. Well, pros and cons of being the attacker and defender, like there are pros. Okay, so the attacker, okay, the pros, the pro, pros, is you get to control the tempo of the game. You get to control the tempo of the game. That's one. Okay. Hopefully that is pretty good. You can control the tempo of the game. Usually, defender sits back. He cannot do anything. There's nothing much he can do. You control the tempo of the game. When I mean control the tempo of the game, as in you get to slap the guy around. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's a bad way. You get to attack. Which, with element of surprise. Okay? That's attacker's benefit in TVT. Um, third benefit is tech advantage. That is going to remain true. You have tech advantage over the other guy. If you're going one on one, especially, you pretty much achieve nearly the highest tech in the game within like the first nine minutes. So, usually the attacker has tech advantage. So, those are their three main advantages that the attacker has. Now here are some con signs, which kind of explain um, if the attacker does perfect 100% execution and the defender does 100% perfect execution, 
the defender will win. Okay? So basically, as long as the defender knows what type of attack is coming, he can fend it off. Okay? That's why you have to use element of surprise so that this does not remain true. Okay? It will suck if you guys have near equal execution, but he's going to win because of that. Okay? Defenders usually have that advantage. That's the first problem of the attacker. Second disadvantage is you will have inferior economy. Okay? Common sense. The defender is going to open up a macro bill. He will have more economy. Okay? So in order to for this fact to remain true, you need to do a certain minimum amount of damage in order to be even. If you don't do enough a certain amount of damage, you are generally behind. Bah. Okay? That makes sense, right? So let me let me make this really neat. Hopefully you guys can read it better. Oops. There we go. Alright. So that is the cons of the attacker. Okay. So the defender. Okay. You've got some pro con pro you got some advantages. Okay. Pretty much think of cons and move it as pros. <laughs> okay. Just, think, just literally flip this into this. So I'm just copy and paste. That's what it literally is. If the defender <laughs> Defender does perfect 100% execution and the uh, attacker does 100% execution, the defender will win. Okay. Eco advantage. Strong mid game. So, yeah, I'll just put that down as strong early game. Okay, so these are your advantages. So cons of being a defender. Okay. If you have no idea what type of attack the attacker is doing, the chances of you getting damage is high. So basically, you are blind. Generally, the defender is kind of blind. It's usually the attacker that has complete control. So you need to be really good with your scouting. There are some ways to mediate that, like builds like Reapers, scans. It's all. It all depends. So it's all different. So the defender. Okay, cons of the defender. There isn't really much con much cons for being a defender. Oh yeah, tech is salt. So yeah, that's the other disadvantage of being a defender. But you get stronger economy, so that, that makes up for the, the loss. So that's how pretty much TVT is. The roles are pretty much divided into attacker and defender. So depending on your style, you get to be the attacker or the defender. Or both people can be the defender, both people can be the attacker. It doesn't really matter. So remember how I told you guys the analogy of TBT is pretty much an angry relationship between a male and a female? Where the male, aka the attacker, pretty much beats the crap out of the one who's the defender. And the defender pretty much takes it in the butt and pretty much uh, needs to hold that's what pretty much TBT is like, in my personal opinion. So that's why I like to favor being the attacker. Okay. There's, cause there's nothing wrong being defender, but it's just really frustrating that you have to keep up with the attacker's like flow. And it gets really gay if two people becomes the attacker when like two banshees attack at the same time. You have to attack and defend at the same time. It's super annoying, but uh, yeah, pretty gay. Okay, well, ignoring the comments. Okay, 
So they, that's pretty much the attacker and defender. Well, de depending how you want to be the attacker or defender, uh, there are multiple ways to play it out. So generally, uh, I mean, most people, most most Terran players are like to play the defender role. Um, while there are certain particular people that like to play the attacker role. It's up to you guys to talk uh, what to um, what to play it out. But I'm going to talk more about the attacker role because this is where I I like the most. Okay, so hope you guys got this because I'm about to delete this part. Okay, so. Alright, so the attacker role, most common build, the most common build is pretty much 111. Okay, that would be true. But 111, there's a limitation. There, there are a lot of possibilities with 111, but there are limitations with 111 at the same time. And when I mean limitations, I mean there's only really five unit compositions in 111. Okay, those five unit compositions. The five unit compositions are green, hellion, at the back, green, hellion, banshee, tanks, cloak banshee, and unorthodox. Now, when I mean unorthodox, they're pretty much the odd bills that you don't normally see in, um, in, t in TVT, but they're still there, they exist. Like Proxy Thor. Uh, what else is there? Reaper Hellion Medivac. Boo boo boo. Uh, Proxy Marauder. You know, there's, there's a bunch. Yeah, there is a bunch. So, that's for the unorthodox stuff. But, these will remain true. Marine. Hellion, matter of fact, those are the five main unit compositions in one one one. Okay, whenever people go one one one, it's usually these. Usually, okay. <sighs> Meanwhile, okay. So, with that said, okay, within those five unit compositions, there there are three ways to transition into these unit compositions, and those three ways. Well, three gas timings, as I refer. There are three main gas timings to get into. Okay? So those five main gas timings are, the three main gas timings are gas first, which is generally between 11 or 12 supply. And then the second one is standard gas, which is pretty much 13 or 14 supply, depending on how the build goes. And the third one is pretty much 15 gas. Now, I'm not really going to talk about 15 gas too much. This is not super common. As in, there are very, very few people that do it. Okay? So I'm not really going to talk about the 15 gas too much. But everything you see here, like Marine Hellion Medivac, it can be done gas first or standard gas. Green Hellion Banshee can be done with gas first or standard gas. All these things can be done with gas first or standard gas. Okay, there is a way. All the gas timings really mean is how fast your 1-1 one, one changes. So based on your gas timing, okay, you can go really fast or you can go really slow. Okay, going fast, gas first, a little bit slower, standard gas. Okay, does that make sense so far? Any questions so far up to this point? Any questions? <sighs> Any questions? I guess there's no questions. So, um, yeah. That is pretty much the attacker and defender. Um, so yeah, there's three gas timings. Let's see here. Most common build is in one one. I didn't say most common build. I said first of all, 
that's for the attacker okay the most common build for the attacker if you know how to read since you're pretty bad since you're the one who constantly complains is 111 most attackers use 111 unless you're the guy who likes the two racks that's really up to you yeah you could be the attacker while expanding but your attacker meaning you're the attacker herp derp <laughs> Merlo, you have no idea what you're talking about. You're not even reading what this says right here, but since you can't read, you don't have to say anything. Okay? You don't have to say anything. But yeah, <coughs> most attacker, the reason why, uh, let's see here. Yeah, like I said, if you're the attacker, 1 1 is the most common build. There are other builds, 2 racks. Um, proxy Marauder, but the most common one is 111 because it's a tech build. So, since some people are really stupid, can't really argue with them. Now, well, what was I saying again? Oh yeah. So there's a difference. Um, what was I saying again? Oh yeah. So yeah. Uh, like I said, there are five. You know, there are usually five ways. I mean, there are three gas timings, three normal gas timings that can that can be used for these builds. So I'm kind of gonna kind of give an example. Kind of give it an example. So okay. So we're gonna start off with the first one. The Marine, Hellion, the Medivac. This can be done with standard gas or gas first. So I'll kind of give a show, I'll give an example of how the build order goes. Okay. So, um, start with gas first. I would like to speed this up to replay, but I mean not replay um, the builder, but it can't be helped. Oh yeah, so I'm gonna pause right here. Oh yeah, so a few notes, a few notes on gas first. So there are a few notes on gas first. Um, first is most players don't like to scout early with gas first. The reason why people don't like to scout early with gas first is because you don't have many SCVs mining minerals. You're, you're, this, it's pretty much one of your biggest limitations. Like, If you look at a 1MAX Expo, 1MAX Gasless Expo, there is one guy making the building and one guy scouting. That's pretty much two SCVs not mining minerals. Okay, But when you look at gas first, or a gas build, there's three guys on gas and one guy making the production. That's four guys not mining minerals, okay, compared to two guys. And if you're gonna scout on top of that, that's five guys not mining minerals. So five guys not mining minerals is pretty big at this early game, like the first minute, two minute of game. So people don't like to scout. That's one of the reasons why. With gas first, you're very limited on minerals. So like I said before, one of the disadvantages of being the attacker, well, yeah, one of the disadvantages is you don't have as great of an economy compared to the other guy. The guy, other guy is going to have a slightly greater economy than you, okay? So, yeah, that's one of the, that's the first note about gas first. Why people don't like the gas. They pretty much delay their, delay their scouting of the gas or uh, they don't scout till like when Hellions pop out. It's like one of the two things. Let's see here. Um, okay, so second note. Okay, gas first. Um, even if you do scout, there isn't much you can do if you do see it coming because your barracks is delayed, okay, that's going to remain true. So if they happen to do like an 11-11 proxy racks on you, 
um, you have the disadvantage. You have a delayed barracks, you only have one of the barracks. Okay, there's really nothing much you can do. Even if you know it's coming, you can't really do anything much about it. That's just a build or disadvantage right there. It's just a hard counter. So, um, there isn't really much you can do. You might as well keep mining with the SCV you got. Okay, that's the second note about gas first. So, yeah. With that said, so yeah. So we get our barracks at 13. So, put two guys. So, um, we keep making up to set, uh, 16 orbital. And then the same SCV is going to make uh, the factory. Make a marine. And after this marine, you're going to get uh, a reactor. Get supply depot. And this marine is there to deny scout of the SCV, pretty much. That's pretty much the goal. The SCV that's making the factory is going to be the one that's making a starport. You can make marines and hellions non stop. Until you make Sarah. Now, when Hellions come out, you have an option to scout with your Hellions. And I forgot to make a supply report. That's not good. That's bad. It's bad. But anyhow, the point is by the time this medevac comes out, you've got about seven marines and three hellions. Okay? That supply block wasn't supposed to happen. I was a little distracted looking at the chat. But yeah. So that's how pretty much the build order goes for Marine Heli Medevac. Okay? So that is what we did for gas first. All right. And we press dash arm to start. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, but standard gas. Now standard gas. Yeah, okay, so shit. I'm pause. All right, so all right, so a few notes on gas first. Compare to standard gas, your one 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 is typically faster. Okay, but uh, even though it's faster, the okay. So if you really compare. If you compare to a one rax expo, 
compared to a 111 that has like standard gas. Tip typically, the guy who's doing a 1x Expo is only about like somewhere between four to six SCVs in the lead, I guess. Okay, he's not that much in the lead. Like, there's a very few SCV lead, so there has to be a certain minimum amount of damage you have to do with 111 um, with standard gas in order to be even, right? But with gas first. Your, the amount of damage that you have to do is slightly higher, but you have more of an attack advantage. That's kind of the plus sign, if that makes sense. So the minimal amount of damage you do um, with gas first is typically higher. So that's, some, that's something to note, because with standard gas, you're going to have extra minerals, and that extra mineral is typically going to be a fast... Um, you're basically your expansion. So that's something to note. Get our barracks at 12, pretty much standard. And then you're going to make a depot. I'm gonna go up to three marines. Okay. Go go two or three marines. It's really, it's really a player choice. And after that, third marine, second marine or third marine, it gets have a reactor. expansion. So compared to a gas first, you do have your expansion a lot earlier, but the minimal amount of damage you have to do is higher, obviously. Oh, no. So this is pretty much an example. And then pretty much when medevacs come out, you pretty much achieve the same thing, but everything's just slightly delayed by, let's say 40 seconds, 30-40 seconds. But at least you have your expo, there's a difference. With this expo, you don't have to do as much damage, because you guys are, you're pretty much going the same rate as SCV production as the other guy. So that's that. And then, that's for Marine Heli Medevac. 
So that just shows you an example of gas versus standard gas. Uh, there's also Marine Hellion Banshee, so I'll kind of show you an example of that. So, yeah. The builder or chain is called Yabot. Y A B O T. Now this time I'm going to try gas first Banshee. We get it at 12. Total supply. Revolution, I just said the map. Hope you're paying attention. Okay, so we're going to gas first, Benji. Gas first, Benji is pretty much like a really popular gas first build to do. Um, Marine Hunting Medivac is a lot easier to fend off, but Banshee, not quite so. The map name is called Yabot, Y A B O T. Okay, so. Start your tech lab, you could start your second supply depot. Just lift the barracks and your starport will be on the tech lab. Pretty simple. Just like that. So by the time the starport is complete, it will become a banshee. And this is pretty much the fastest possible, with gas first, it's pretty much the fastest possible banshee you can make without screwing your economy. Alright, so that's something to know. Um, standard gas, anyhow. Uh, like I said, that's pretty much gas first for Hellion Banshee. Uh, you can do standard too. Um, if you if you kind of figured out how standard works for the standard gas for Hellion Marine Medivac, pretty much the same thing with Marine Hellion Banshee. Okay, same thing. The only difference is the tech lab is not on the barracks, but the tech lab will be on the factory. Okay, so that's how you pretty much do. The Banshee part. Now, if you notice that these two builds sh share something in common, okay, they all use one gas. If you guys notice, they all use one gas. Okay, these two uses one gas. Now, tanks and cloak Banshee, they need two gas to pull off. You can't go one gas tanks, okay? It's, you can't. You just can't. You can't go one gas cloak Banshee unless you don't make anything for a while. So it's not practical. So two gas, one gas. Okay. So if you have to scan and you see that he has only one gas, you can pretty much cross these two off in terms of what the hell they're doing. Okay. That's pretty much the logic behind that. So I'm trying to make it systematic as much as possible. Um, what else is there? So yeah, cloak banshee. You pretty much, for a cloak banshee part, you pretty much get the second gas the moment you start the factory. Whether it's 
gas first or standard gas, you get the second gas when you start the factory. Okay? Same thing for tanks. Tanks, instead of the tech lab on the start port, it's going to be the tech lab on the factory. The factory is pretty much the one that it pumps out the tanks. Okay? Oh. So, with that said, does anyone else have questions up until this point? How to get there? Okay, there's a million transition. I can't really talk about the transition part, but I can definitely tell about tell you about the opening part. Okay, the attacking part they they share a lot of similarity on ladder. It's not um, too big of a difference. Anyone have questions so far? Oh wait. I thought it showed my notepad. That's odd. Oh. This is what I was trying to show. Okay. Hold on. No one no one said anything, that's why. Because the, the I have a hockey set up here, that's why. See, I was writing down stuff and you guys weren't watching. See? Okay, so I guess I have to explain again because nobody said anything. Nobody said anything on what I was writing down. The attacker role. Most common build being an attacker is 111. The five main unit compositions of 111. Green Helling Medivac, Green Helling Banshee, some kind of tank play, Globe Banshee, and or Unorthodox play. Unorthodox play fall under the category of things like Proxy Marauder, Reaper Helling Medivac, Reaper Helling Banshee. Proxy Marauder, you know, all that stuff, okay? And within those unit compositions, there are three ways to get into it, okay? There are three ways, three gas timings to transition into it. There's gas first, which is 11 or 12 supply, standard gas, which is 13 or 14 supply, and then you've got 15 gas, not common. This is a very uncommon thing, so you can't talk about this, but I showed you what these two are, okay? And then there's a few notes on gas first. Most players don't like to go scout early with gas first because you don't have as much guys mining and minerals. I already made this point earlier. If you scout, there isn't much you can do even if you know it's coming. Okay? Because your barracks is delayed, etc. Compared to standard gas, your 111 is typically faster with 111. Okay? Hopefully I said it in the really, really summed up version. If that makes any sense. Okay, so that's pretty much that. Um, like I said before, Marine, Heli, and Medivac, they all share something in common. They all use one gas. Tank, Cloak, Banshee, they use two gas. So if you happen to scan and find out that there's only one gas, you could pretty much cross the Tank and Cloak, Banshee part off your potential list what they can or cannot do. Again, some of the one access to go banshee. Is it better to target the marine or the SCV? Um, it kind of depends. Like, um, I try to target the SCV as much as possible. But if you don't have a choice, you should try. To, as long as it's a, the banshee is attacking, that's a good start. Okay. Yes, proxy four is two gas. Okay. Okay. This is two gas. This is two gas. This is two gas. Two gas. Okay. Proxy Thor isn't any different from tank play. It's very, very similar. The only difference really is instead of the 100 gas that goes into starport, the 100 gas into goes into armory. Okay? It's really the difference. That's how you get to proxy Thor or Thor straight up. Obviously people would proxy, so proxy the armory usually. Okay? So, uh, what else do I have to say? Oh yeah, and Reaper Helium Medivac. Um, yeah, this is a pretty tricky build because um, it used to be really popular a while back when it first like introduced. But basically, people always thought when you open up Reaper, um, people thought you're gonna get an expo behind it, which wasn't true apparently. Because what people do is just go straight one one one, get a really fast second gas after they produce the first Reaper, and they just proceed one 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 from there, and voila. How do you hold Marine Heli and Medivac with One Max Expo? Well, it depends how you open up with One Max Expo. Um, the two main way, okay, so that's just the attacker role. Okay. So 
I'm gonna delete some of these things. Okay. Defender. Okay. Defender. Such example builds are WebMax Expo, uh, CC First, Reaper Expo. Okay. So those are the few common ones. Um, how do you hold? Well, most one rack, one rack expo, they usually either go three racks or one one one. That's what most people do. So, if you want to fend off marine Hellion medevac, um, if you have three racks into medevac timing, the best way to fend it off is you make sure they don't elevate in the first place. You want to intercept the army as soon as possible. If you have to pull SCVs, you will have to pull SCVs. Okay. Some people won't have to, some people do, but the idea is intercept them before they elevate, okay? Before they drop. So you, for that, you need to have complete vision in your main base. If you don't have it, you're gonna die. you probably could die, okay? Straight up. If you're gonna go one one one, you pretty much m imitate what they're doing. So instead, if they're going Marine Hellion Medevac, you're gonna go Marine Hellion Viking, and you're gonna just have the bare minimum just basically counter. You don't even need to pull SCVs as long as you attack them when while they elevate. <laughs> Pretty much stop them. Okay, that's pretty much how you hold. Okay, does anyone have questions up until this point? Does anyone have questions? So yeah, uh, let me label this correctly. So, I mean, Proxy Marauder, it's pretty common. This is all 1-1-1 one, one, one based unit composition. So label this really nicely. There you go. So yeah, um, the reason why I'm pretty bad at TVT is because, well, the first reason is I'm not comfortable with TVT. Um, TVT, until a certain point, it becomes very positional. The aspect of micro does not kick in as much. Micro kicks in mainly between like the first eight minutes of game. So with that aspect completely gone, it's completely positional practically. Um, I felt very uncomfortable about that. Because I felt uncomfortable about that, there's two really main unit comp there's two really two main compositions during the mid to late game for Terran. It's either a marine tank, bio pretty much, or full mech. Okay. I can never find like a satisfactory composition that I'll stick to. I occasionally go marine tank, I occasionally go mech. I really don't know what to stick to. And I don't know what I feel most comfortable with. I feel uncertain. Um, and three, I usually don't like to play straight up for some reason in TVT. So I always resort to aggressive builds, like one base builds especially. So because it's yes, it's a patient matchup, which I'm not really so patient. I pretty much throw the games a lot. Okay. So I mean I understand TVT, it's just I don't feel comfortable how TVT is like. That makes proper sense. Okay. So yeah. So anyhow, like I said before. So hopefully I labeled this correctly for people to understand. Okay. Yeah, okay. So hopefully um Yeah, 
these are pretty much pretty much examples okay so um, what else do I have to explain yeah it's pretty much it for the opening okay so mall 5 mat give an ex uh, kind of a point one x expo versus reaper expo okay so I'll kind of give some pointers, um, some advantage and disadvantage. One rack expo, okay. The pros for that. The pros for one rack expo is it's more mineral economical. It's more economical. Okay, one rack expo. Okay, so it's gasless expo. Okay, it's, it's a better word for. It. Okay, pros. It's more economical. You have more initial marines. Yeah, those are two advantages. <laughs> it's not too much. So. Pros is probably a better word. Advantages is probably a better word. Advantages. Uh, Reaper, Expo. Their advantages are different. Their expansion advantage is uh, faster upgrades. Okay, they have faster upgrades in comparison to a one max gases expo. So if you want like combat shield or stim really early, this is it, and it's perfectly fine because it's actually easier to hold off um, certain aggressive builds because you just have the fast upgrade to kick in. So let's say you Reaper expo and you get combat shield really early, it's easier to fend off against a, let's say, a Banshee Harass, because you just have the combat shield earlier. You have it kicked in. That's kind of an example. Uh, let's see here, what other advantage? Uh, second advantage is, you can trick the opponent. Okay? When I mean trick the opponent, you don't, you don't have to expo could still go 1-1-1. One, one, one. So you do have that, uh, you do have the trick. You have the trick of tricking the opponent. You could still go 1-1-1. One, one, one. You could still technically go into that. Reaper Hellion Medivac. So yeah. You do have that advantage in that sense. So that is your advantage with Reaper Expo. You have faster upgrades, can trick the opponent. One gas gasless expo. The advantages for a stat is pretty much it's more economical. You have more marines compared to a beach expo. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Does anyone else have questions? Questions so far? If you're the defender and your opponent goes Banshee, would you get Stim or Combat Shields first to defend against the Banshee? Um, it can go both ways. They both work. Okay, like, let's say, um, well, depends what, what type, what, what are you going to open up? If you're going to open up Gasless Expo, it's probably better for you to open up combat shield first in order to fend off the banshee attack. Because <clears throat> when you open up stem with gases expo, it's not going to be done when the gap banshee hits you. When the banshee hits you, the stem just isn't going to kick in, but the combat shield will. So you have that advantage. But if you open up reaper expo, you can go both stem and combat shield. It doesn't really matter, okay? Because by the time the banshee hits you, you'll still you probably will have stem ready, and you definitely will have combat shield ready. So. That's that. All I could definitely say is gas is expelled. You should open up combat shield first. Well, yeah, stim will make your marines die faster, but but if you have scans and you have cloak or something, the banshee is pretty much a guaranteed kill. You could chase it down. Okay. Because sometimes when people have good banshee control, it feels like they are in complete control. 
they're in complete control over killing your marines and your marines can't really do crap against the banshee so having an upgrade will definitely assist you whether you could take more hits or kill it okay so yeah but I can definitely say Reaper Expo is safer okay this is safer safer but more this one is more economical okay so yeah uh, those are just that's just one max expo get gasless expo versus Reaper Expo bills uh, faster upgrades fast upgrades pretty much being yeah like I said any other questions so this is pretty much open opening builds like this is just <laughs> this is pretty much how it is early game TVT. Okay. Uh, maybe I can expand it early bigger. So yeah, there you go. This is pretty much early game. Ta da! Boom. Um. Yeah. It's pretty okay, so yeah. Oh yeah. Also for tank play. Can we tank all in? Uh oh. Raven plus tank. Tank expo. There there are different examples. I like to do the Raven tank. Personally. So yeah. Um this is pretty much it right here. Early game TVT. Attacker side. The five unit composition of one on one. There's three gas timings to get into. And this is the defender part. And then I explain basically the gas expo versus the reaper expo. Advantages versus each other. Um, yeah. Any other questions? This is it. This is it. This is pretty much early game right here. New keyboard is awesome. Freaking awesome. I think this is pretty much all we have to explain. I can do all three all of these, but I never felt okay, my personal opinion, I never felt comfortable with Gasless Expo. I tried Reaper Expo and I felt fine with it, but when you verse against someone with Gasless Expo, the Reaper Expo is it feels slightly inferior than the Gasless Expo. That's why it's like I'm kind of iffy about the Defender part. The keyboard I got is the Leopold FC seven hundred R white. If you could recommend one build from this to grind mechanics with until masters. What would it be and why? Well, um, anything. <laughs> I'm serious though. Okay, attacker and defender. If I'm gonna have to pick one, okay, I say like um, it doesn't matter because attacker and defender isn't about what's completely superior or not or what's easier or not. It's just what your preference of how you want to play TBT is like. Okay, you can still be the attacker and expand behind it. It's perfectly fine. You can still be the defender, get the extra econo um, the extra economy for a stronger mid game. It's perfectly fine. But if you're going to if you're going to be the attacker and you want just one build to stick to, being the attacker to get to masters, I probably recommend something that relates to Banshee. Okay, something that relates to Banshee. Anything that relates to Cloak Banshee, Gas First Banshee, I don't care. Okay, Banshee Expo, you name it. Anything that relates to Banshee, because Banshee, um, there's a lot of multitasking. Like, what? There are so many people out there that when they do Banshee Micro, they can't macro during the same time. Like, they just completely fall apart. Like, it's a very it, it's for for an attacking build compared to the rest. Things that relate Banshee is more uh, mechanically oriented. So if you keep practicing something that ha requires heavy mechanics, it will just overall improve your multitasking. Um, I'm not talking in the sense what if it's a superior build or not, but it's a build that requires mechanics, right? So 
it's a good way to exercise it. So I recommend something that relates to Banshee if you are the attacker side. If you are the defender side, I recommend... Well, they both work. It, equally fine. Like, I have no questions with that. So, defender could pick pretty much anything. Straight up. Okay? So yeah, I, that's my personal opinion for you guys. For whoever said that question. Yeah, so that's pretty much my opinion. If you're going to be the attacker and you pick just one build to practice to masters, do something that relates to Banshee. Because Banshee builds, a lot, compared to the other attacking builds, requires somewhat decent mechanics. And it's a good way to exercise your mechanics. It helps you multitasking, so it's a good way to practice that. At first, if you, it's your first time doing it, you're going to probably fail in it because you're going to float like crazy or something. But it's a good way to practice. Okay? Let's see here. Getting good at one build is kind of flawed. The only thing you can practice is precise time, which isn't a big deal. Stopping only only one build is what got you to masters. Well, anyhow, if it's if you're going if you are a lower level player that's going to masters, sticking to one build is it's okay. It's not it's not a bad idea. Being consistent is it's good. Okay. Do you think it's better to play one Rax Expo or attacking build? If I'm platinum. What to improve? Um, they both work. I'm telling you, there's nothing wrong if you are being the attacker or the defender. There's this perfectly acceptable. Okay, like there's absolutely no problem. It's not about being attacker doesn't mean you, it'll be better. Being attacker doesn't mean you're better. It's just a complete preference of style what you want to play. Okay, I mean if you had if if I had a better option for you guys, I'll say you do both. Okay. Like if it's a short distance map, go with the attacker build. If it's a long distance map, go with the defender build. Okay. Like if you're the defender build, okay, the being the defender, you have more of an understanding of your opponent. Like if you know it's coming, you know how to fend it off. You know how to defend. Okay. It gives you a strong mid game. That's perfectly fine. But when you're attacking, People, whenever they're attacking, they forget to like do stuff back at base, okay? So you can say that the, the level of mechanics compared to attacker compared to defender, the attacker is slightly higher, okay? Because at a lower level, you want to practice your mechanics, this is a good way of exercising, I'd say. And the mo probably the most intensive one out of all of these is probably something that relates to Banshee, okay? Like good Banshee micro pretty much craps the opponent's pants. Like, they can't do anything to touch you unless they have a Viking. That, that's what basically having good Banshee Control is about. Uh, I wouldn't say you lose if you have no damage if you're an attacker, but you definitely have the disadvantage. But it's not game over. It's game over if you just suicide everything you got, but it's not game over. You do have a disadvantage though, okay? But you still have the tech advantage. That's the other advantage you have. Attacker is kind of all in. Well, there a lot of attacker builds can be all in, but there are the, there are attacking builds that have um that can expo behind it. So pretty much the example, like I said, is pretty much banshees. You could banshee expo. Banshee expo is so freaking common, like it's 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 really really common. Okay, either it's cloak or whatever. Okay, it doesn't matter. Well, no matter what, if you're at the lower level, you have to learn how to defend and attack. You can't just stick to one, okay? Like, like I'll give you an example. Look at any pro gamer, any pro gaming Terran player in TVT. They're not going to just stick to attacker all the way or defender all the way. They mix it up in the best of something. Okay, Attacker, defender, attacker, defender. They go back and forth, okay? They're not better or worse, but because there's so many diverse things you can do in TVT that... Like for having that kind of like trickery, that mind game, the possibilities that you can do is super important in TVT. What do you think about going faster if you're one 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 first one max like well if you don't do anything? Is it safe? Um if you do a certain minimum of dam damage with one 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 versus a one max expo, 
that's good. If you do a certain minimum damage, like, you know they can't counterattack you, they, you know for a fact they cannot kill you, having a third CC is a good idea. Like, they can't touch you, right? So you're going to have a ec way supreme economic advantage to follow it up. So that's perfectly fine. It's perfectly good. So uh, yes, having a fast third CC if you're one one versus a one max expo is good. But if you don't do any damage, it's not too good because, well, it might not matter. You probably will be dead if they attack correctly. What's the build that Flash used in TVP? Would that work? Would that fast tech work in TVP? Well, Flash did a bunch of builds. Can't really tell you if that works in TVP if I don't know what the build is. If I have one max expo into one on one, is it a viable option to the one max expo to three max? Okay, look. Okay, within one max gasless expo. Okay, there are two uh, two main variations of one max gasless expo. Okay, <laughs> two main one. Okay, there's that three racks. There, there's one that has three racks. Three racks transition. Either you get um, either you get two racks, then double. Either you get one racks plus double gas plus one more racks, or you can pretty much go up to add two more racks plus double gas. Okay, this is pretty common in TVT, uh, TVP. Okay, and then the other main variation is pretty much one one one. Okay, those are the two main variations of one max gases expo. Okay, so let's see here. Um, what did you do with the old keyboard? It's standing right behind me. Fast three plus three timing push. Uh, no, that's that's a build I meant for TVP, seriously. Because TVP you could still do the timing attack, but in TVT if you try to do the timing attack like and they have <laughs> they have a bunch of tanks, like it kinda of prompts you not to attack it. <laughs> so anyhow. I always use one rex X one to three racks. Is it it's almost always go fine to pull enough bio plus food against one one one, counter a few economic advantage. Yes. So yeah. Um The cons, like I said before guys. <laughs> If you are versing certain one one ones, you might have to pull SCV to defend. Actually, that, that is pretty much an advantage both these things share. Cons for one defender builds. If you're versing certain one ones, you might have to pull SCV to defend. It's not a big deal, but it's a necessity. Okay, so um, so let me just make this neat. Of the noteworthy, so it's a really common sense. So yeah, okay. When I uh, let's see here, when I play TVT versus Mech, I don't make any medivacs unless they don't make Vikings for a reason. It's a comment, it's not a question. So yeah, uh, is there anything else I've left out? Beauty Attacker, the most common attacking build is 111. 
There's marine helium energy. It requires one gas. Two gases require these things. Three ways to get gas. Time to transition to the heat composition. Standard gas and fifteen gas. Not so common. I write this down because some people might like extremely be derp. So the defender, some examples are Winmax Expo, CC first, Vapor Expo. Difference between Winmax Gases Expo versus Reaper Expo. Winmax Gases Expo advantage is it's more economical. You have more uh, marines compared to Marine Expo. Um, Reaper Expo, Reaper Expo advantage is you have faster upgrades, you can check the opponent, don't have to go expo, you could still go one one one. The cons for defender builds is that if you're versing certain one one ones, you might have to pull CVs to defend. Yeah, expo builds probably. And the two main variations of one max gas expo, you could transition to two main transitions, really, two main transitions is the three racks, which is either you add one racks, double gas, and then add one more racks, so a total of three, or you can add two more racks plus double gas afterwards. This is pretty much this is more common TVP. And then there's one one one. Yeah, one 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 uh, transition is a little more fragile, but you know, what can you do? I haven't quite figured out how to do the region realm thing, and I'm kind of lazy to do it. So yeah, okay. Does he have a website where he posts those? I post a note or post a vod. If you're posting about the VOD, this VOD will be on YouTube and Twitch. If you're looking at the notepad stuff, I usually delete them. Usually delete them. And you can grab the notes again if you watch the VOD. Okay. Does everyone understand everything I'm writing? Like, it's not messy or anything, right? It's not messy or anything, right? Like, you guys understand, like, everything you read, I think. I think. Okay. It mostly. Alright, let's see what the chat says. Uh, let's see, if you scout a fast third base CC, how can you punish him? Well, same thing, but 1 1 1. If you're going to an, an expo, a defender build, a macro build, you have just have to be greedier. If I did this in TVP, uh, yeah, the lecture changes every now and then, so don't worry. 1 max x123 cc with bunker well, it depends what build you're doing relocalizer legal uh, it's against still the terms of policy but it's not like blizzard do tra crap about it so because all the programmers do it all the relocalizer really does is it just changes the the, the variable text file so yeah okay so that's a note on the attacker and defender in the early game. The attacker, I think I pretty much uh, labeled everything pretty somewhat accurately. I think. Yeah, this is note for you. Um, 
Now that's early to mid game, guys. I mean early game. There's mid mid game. Oh crap. Oh crap. Uh, TBT. <laughs> mid game. I'm not gonna get too far into it because we're gonna run out of time. So <laughs> That's early game, guys. I, I didn't talk about mid or late game. I just talked about early game. Okay, I'm just gonna sum it up, okay? Early game, there's the attacker and the defender in the roles of TVT. If you're the attacker, the most common attacking build is one on one. Within one on one, there's five different unit compositions, okay? Marine, Heli, and Medivac, Marine, Heli, Banshee, Tanks, Cloak, Banshee, Unorthodox. Unorthodox is Proxy Thor, you know, all this shit right here. Uh, these two I said about the common, they relate to they all relate to one gas. Everything here is two gas. Okay, and the three ways like I just wrote everything here. You guys have to just read it. Okay, I I wrote this down perfectly good. It should not be difficult to read. Like I don't have to re say everything. <laughs> okay, but I'm not okay. Mid game, I'm not gonna be thorough. Okay, <laughs> mid game. Okay. I'm not gonna be thorough. I'm just gonna be make it really straight up simple. Okay, it's very very vague. Okay, two main unit compositions in mid game. Okay, two main compositions, but there are more, but not as common. Well, that's a really bad way to say. There is a marine tank. Mech. Well, I guess you could say three. Full bio. Whoa, why is the chat scrolling everywhere? What's going on here? Okay. Okay, so. Like I said before. Okay, so these are the three standardized main unit compositions in the mid game. Marine tank, mech, full vial. Okay, so okay, some facts that you have to know. In full big size army engagements, mech is traditionally. Stronger. That will remain true no matter what. 200, 200 army fights, mecha is stronger. Okay? Just gonna point that out. Mecha is stronger. Okay? That's fact number one. Fact number two when marine tankers versus mech, they usually stop making tanks. And the reason why they stop making tanks is their tanks are weaker than the enemy tanks. Like the enemy tanks are gonna have upgrades. Your tanks are not gonna have as good upgrades compared to, in comparison, and they're gonna have more more tanks than you. Like they're straight up superior tanks. So usually they stop making tanks, and they go full bio. That's usually how it is. Usually, okay. It's not some people still go tanks, but they usually transition somewhere to full bio. Okay, and when I mean full bio, I mean there's marauders mixed in. Okay. Um, oh shit, I have a big headache. Holy crap. Okay. Uh, what are, what are, what other facts can I say about these? See, is it bad to go full bio without medivac if they have a lot of Vikings? It's really situational, man. <coughs> oh man. Example of a mech transition. <coughs> There's so many mech transitions, I can't explain it, okay? That is a build order thing. There's everyone has their own build order when transitioning to mech. I have my own transition, pro gamers have their own transitions. It's usually just best to look at a stream and copy it. Okay. Well, spy, I'm 
I will try to get to that. I'll try to get to that part. Okay, so other facts. Um, I just put that as two, two facts about the unit compositions. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Is this high school volatile? Maybe that's a bad word. So yeah. Okay. Okay, screw that. Uh, okay, so those are the facts. They're in mid game, three main unit compositions in Terran versus Terran, green tank, mech, full bio, facts about the unit composition, full army size engagement, mech is traditionally stronger. Okay, it's true. Straight up. <laughs> Common sense, full bio is most mobility. Okay. Name this as two. to play marine tank versus marine tank. Okay. Away. Oh, let's see here. Make sure you have vision everywhere. So I kind of give it an example. Okay. I kind of give it an example. Okay. Kind of give it an example. Let's say Daybreak, I'm playing Marine Tank versus Marine Tank. I should have complete vision everywhere from the opponents. Uh, just complete vision and key points. Common fact, uh, common sense, obviously the tower, right? The next spot you'll probably want to consider putting is right here. Right here. Okay. So I'm going to put it down right here. So yeah, this is just to give an example. Okay, now common sense, guys. Uh, actually, yeah. No. I'll make, yeah, I'll use my Hellion. Okay, so let's say I have an expansion here, expansion here, expansion here. Okay, Daybreak is a pretty good example. 
I need to know always have vision everywhere on the map. So you should have always like a marine right here. If you don't have a vision, if you don't have vision right here, let's say this Hellion is the opponent's marine tank. Instead, you they don't need to go through this area here because you have vision. You know what's coming. They'll go around, and there's no way for you to know if your third is going to get attacked or not. See, if you have vision right here. Your army doesn't have to completely position here. Sometimes it could be positioned here or here, whatever the hell you like. But you don't have to concentrate too much on this part because you know it's coming. You could, If you know it's coming, you could always move the units from here or here and focus more on here. You could position army, you could focus right here if you know they're coming. But sometimes you don't know if they're coming here. They could be going around here. So having vision everywhere on the empty spots in the map is super important when you're versing marine tank. If anything about marine tank, it's really easy to base race, so this matchup. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Very easy to base race in TVT. Okay. Make sure you have vision everywhere. Having vision everywhere pretty much means you will know where to position your army. That way, that way, you don't have to put units in useless locations. You will you will know where to position army. You can avoid unnecessary base race. Base trades, base, whatever the hell you want to call it. So, yeah. That's a very important part about Marine Tank. You need to have vision, especially here. So, I know a bunch of times where people just only have the watchtower and they have no vision here, they have no vision here. Like, if you have vision here, you have vision here, and you have vision here, the only possibility where the enemy is at is everywhere around here, right? That that puts pretty much a big limitation where he can or cannot be. Go reposition your army like that. So that's the first thing you want to do. Don't derp into a tank line. Okay, this happens to me so many times. Like, you have any idea how many marines die like to tank line? Like you like some people just literally just walk straight into tank lines. So pretty much don't walk the line. Scan head, stimmer marine head. And if there's a tank line right in front of you, maybe hold position on Marines so they don't derp into tank line. Okay, I'm pretty sure this has happened to you guys many, 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 many times. Okay, so Marine tank. Okay, it's all about moving around. Yes, and not getting caught off guard by opponent's enemy army. You need to have vision everywhere. First key. Second is don't derp into Marine. <laughs> don't derp into tank lines. Okay, so that's just some facts about it. So anyhow, that's the way. That's some. That's some key pointers. So yeah, let me just put that down. Some key pointers. When playing Marine Tank first Marine Tank. So when playing full bio first mech. Okay. Some key pointers. First first key pointer when we're saying full bio versus mech. First key pointer is it's somewhat similar. First thing to Protoss, somewhat similar. You're going full bio, you know, so your unit composition is fairly similar. It's somewhat similar to versing to Protoss, somewhat. So yeah. <coughs> what else is there? Oh yeah, um, you abuse mobility. Okay, meaning. Meaning, 
hit them hard where they are not there. Okay, it's pretty much the best example. Okay, I'll give you two examples of this. The first example is the first example. First example is when mech is pushing. Let's say this is the enemy base right here. He's got third natural main. His mech army is probably around here. And your army is like right here or here, like wherever it may be. Okay. His army is 200, 200. He's going to push out. If you see a bunch of 200, 200 units coming out this funnel right here, his 200, 200 army is not here. Okay. It could be some tanks positioned here, but it's not. 90% of its tanks, 10% of its tanks are probably here defending, right? Realistically. If anything, full bile versus full mech, full mech usually wins. The only time full bile can win is either you have a sick ass flank or they just don't siege at all. It's like two easy ways of beating mech, right? But if there's mech army, eventually. At some point in life, either they're 200, 200, plus 3 attack, I don't care what it is, but they eventually will move out of their turtle phase mode, okay? They eventually will move out. If they move out, you just go around and hit places where they are not there. So if they're moving out to this watchtower, let's say, you can hit to the third, you can hit to the main base, you're basically hitting where he is not there, okay? Hit them where they are not there. Okay, that is an example of, of using mobility, okay? Like, if a 200 to an army is coming out right here, every other spot here, or here, there is less units defending compared to this initial 200 to push to the tower. Think of it like TVP. TVP, you know how, like, Pros has, like, 2-3 Colossus, and they eventually will push out with a 2-3 Colossus up until this point, right? It's kind of like that. Event they don't, Protoss don't just sit there all day. They eventually will move out. If they eventually moving out, something is not defending, right? That's usually your time to push in. Usually. Okay. So that's the first example of abusing mobility. If they, if mech has two bases, your priority As a bio player, is to stall as long as possible so they do don't get their third early. Okay, it's kind of like TVP. In TVP, Terrans generally get their third before the Protoss. That's just a general acceptance fact, right? Same thing for bio versus mech. Because it's somewhat similar to versing Protoss, full bio. They usually get their third base up before the mech. The mech having a third base is super dangerous because they're gonna have more gas and they just just outright become ridiculously strong. Your job as a marine tanker is to stall that long as possible. Long as possible. You're not gonna fight, die trying to stall it, but you wanna try to stall long as possible. Three mech against bio. How do you keep him from running into your third when you push out? Well, look at TVP, okay? TVP, how do Protoss players secure their third? They push out with Colossus, right? They push out with some kind of tier 3 units. Some kind of tier 3 units, right? For Mechers, it's pretty much similar, but they have to have a certain amount of tanks. They have a certain amount of tanks, and then they could expand out. Okay? It's somewhat similar. So yeah, let's see. Some examples when playing full bio versus mech. Um, okay. So when you're reversing full bio against mech, always have a SimCity or deeper wall off at additional bases. So let's say you have a third base, you want to have a deeper wall right here. 
This is important because mechers don't move out until they have a big ass army. But until then, they could do something. They could do like Hellion Runbys and stuff. To stop Hellion Runbys, all you really gotta do has Depot Wall Offs. Really simple. Okay, it's not hard. Alright, one moment, guys. I need to use the bathroom. So yeah, SimCity Depot will also additional basis to stop Helling run buys. Kind of like stopping wing run buys. Kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of. Um, yeah, those are some key pointers. Some key pointers. I'm playing Mac versus Mac. Enough said. Air control. You need air control. Your tanks won't do crap. Okay, and there are a couple of ways to get air control. The first way is Raven. No, DDD is good. Uh, more Vikings. Thor. Viking upgrades. So yeah, if you don't have air control, air control. Any air control, where your tanks won't do crap. Or banshees, of course, or any air unit. And only like banshees. You can see it like it doesn't matter how big your mech army is. You could have like a 200, 200 mech army, and the guy has like 80 supply mech army. If he has one Viking, I mean one banshee, and you have zero Thors, zero Vikings, he could still win the game. It's sad, but it's true. Sad, but it's true. You can't do anything about it. Air control is super freaking important. Then, yeah, please, super important, guys. I should just highlight this part. Lies. How's it lies? Air control is important in Mac vs. Mac. How's it lies? Please tell me. How the hell is it lies that air control is not important when mech versus mech? Tanks shoot up, please. Tanks don't shoot up. <laughs> yeah, so that's some key pointers when versing mech versus mech. Um, other key pointer, what else is there? Yeah, I should just ban trolls. I have a headache. I think I'm sick from the cold outside. Okay, what else is there? Mm. I don't think there is much key pointers when mech versus mech. Oh, no nothing that's noticeable at least. Unless you guys can think of something. So yeah, I'll just keep it as one. So yeah, that's mid game for you. Uh, some key pointers, some checks. Yeah, but uh, okay. Well, air control is important for TVT in general. But let's say you're doing marine tank, 
marine tank versus, uh, I meant full bile versus mech, let's say, you could still somewhat deal with air with marines, right? I mean, if he has Vi if he has more Vikings than full bile, that, that which can happen because you have medevacs, at least your marine part can shoot up. But when you're first saying mech, <laughs> tanks don't shoot up. Like literally, there's only one unit that can fight air to air. That's like Vikings, right? The other option is Thors. But if you make Thors, you lose tank count. But marine, t but full bile, you at least have marines, right? And that's part of your natural army composition. Thors is not a mech's natural unit composition. You add it because to support the air units. Is probably better. The reason why armor is probably better is because. Because it doesn't matter how good Viking attacks are if PDD stops it 100%. Armor at least helps even if PDD is out, plus if Thors are banging your Vikings. So yeah, air control is still important in uh, other aspects in TVT like marine tank versus marine tank or full ball versus mech, but at least you have marines in those unit compositions to deal with the vikings. In full mech versus full mech, vikings are usually your main and only used to deal with first, unit, first air units. Adding thors is an option, but having thors will mean your tank count will drop. Not just because it costs a lot of gas, but because of its long build time. And having less tanks than the other tanks in mech versus mech sucks. It really does suck. Okay. I think I had named out. Alright. So I think this is it. Right here. We got early to mid game. And we pretty much got the mid to late game. How and when do you attack with mech first bio? Is it practical to drop a Thor only factory? Uh no. I told you, if you guys make Thors, I mean, if you constantly kept pumping out Thors, like, you're just not going to have as many tanks in general. Having some Thors is okay, but I'm just saying, there are, it's just basically 
um, what you might call opportunity cost. You make a Thor, you won't have as much tanks. Mech vs. Mech in TVT is about tanks, right? So, I mean, if you worry about timings in the matchup, it's usually in the early game. That's the main timings you want to worry about early game. Not too much about the mid to late game. No, in TVT, not really. Let's see, how do I stop Mech from critical army from playing bio? Even if I deny a third a couple of times, you don't. That's the point. You're only delaying that critical army. You're not stopping it for sure. Like, it's going to happen at some point. The, but the question is, how long can you stall till you properly set up? Okay, so that's kind of the better word to say it. Um, oh yeah, so yeah. These are the pointers I can give out for you. Any questions before we conclude for today? Because this is two hours. Um, I will post on Reddit if you really guys want these notes really bad. I'll copy and paste it. Okay, my TVT sucks too. Well, actually... <laughs> To be fair, my TVT sucks because I keep doing this, this attacking shit, and suiciding. Okay, this is my problem TVT. I suicide shit in TVT, being the attacker. So freaking dumb. I don't know why. I should start, stop it, stop doing that. I should. Such a bad habit. If you want to do high damage and basically wait and force them to target with mass tank, what's the check of okay, move? Well, let's see. The checklist to deliver the fighting blow. There is no ch checklist. <laughs> Sad facts. Just keep getting. You, you, there isn't. You're better off not trying to crack it down. You're just better off out expanding, out upgrading them, and just beat them with sheer units. Um, not many people use Ghost in, in Terran vs. Terran anymore. It used to be popular back then, but. Um, there isn't much you can do. There's not much. It's not as common anymore. I mean, people. some people do it, but it's really rare. I wouldn't rely on it. Yeah, Ma 5, Matt. You can link them. You could... You can put them. It's up to you. It's really up to you. It's really up to you. But I will post this part on Reddit at least. Any last questions before we conclude for today? Before we conclude for today? Baby one, baby one, ba -ba -ba. Any last questions, anyone? Going once, going twice? Could you ladder some? Probably. What? What do you think you did that got you GM from High Masters? Not playing Terran vs. Terran. No joke. Did you guys know? <laughs> I mean, statistically speaking, I have like a 30 something percent win rate in TVT. And vs. Zerg, I had like a 70 percent win rate. And vs. Protoss, I had like 50 something. First Zerg was the reason why I got up. Okay. Literally that season, like was pretty much the rise of the patch Zergs. That's what kept me in the game. Maybe you should fight be defender. <sighs> okay, I think I gave my analogy for it. There's a reason I feel iffy about being the defender, you know. I told you. My my analogy of a, an, a, an angry relationship between a, a male and a female this is how I view TVT being the defender do you want to be the bitch or do you want to be the pimp you slap them or you take it in yeah like god damn it man that's why I kind of feel iffy <laughs> 
That's my... That's how I feel iffy about TVT. I'm not comfortable with it. So when you're making TVT and your opponent is going bio, do you go for one huge killing blow to push off three base when you're going mech? Uh, yeah, usually. <laughs> yeah, mid game is fun. Mid and, uh, and defender in mid game, pretty good. Mid game and being an attacker, not very cool. Not cool. Not cool. So yeah. That's it for today, guys. So I'm going to, if no one has any more questions, we're going to conclude for tonight. So any last questions? After this, I'm playing Heart of Swarm, if you guys want to watch. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just concluding my lecture for today. That's TVT. What's my old keyboard? Okay, you know what? Let me switch scenes. Yeah, this is my keyboard. I told you. Da, 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 da. Oh, my keyboard. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So, yeah. My old keyboard was uh, Razor Blackwing. Can you stream more? I do stream a lot, but apparently I stream at the wrong times. I fixed my mouse problem. Did I have a mouse problem? I had a keyboard problem, but I'm not sure about mouse problem. So yeah, thanks for watching everyone for my lecture three, TVT. I'm not telling about how. <laughs> I'm not exactly about how to improve TVT. Well, I guess it is improving. T it's more like understanding TVT. That's the better word, okay? How understanding TVT from early, early game to somewhat mid to late game. What's the clock in the U.S.? 10.08. 10 o'clock. Alright. Lecture is over. Thanks for watching. I'm going to upload the VOD. I'll post it on Reddit. And then...